What is up guys, Sol I'm here, back with another new Classic WoW Season of Mastery video. With the launch of Season of Mastery getting closer and closer, I think it's time we talk about some specific tips and tricks for the launch of Classic WoW Season of Mastery, basically giving you guys my advice for the launch itself, things to do and things not to do, so let's get into it. Number 1 Grab Skinning if you plan on having herbalism and mining like I do, then start with herbalism and skinning, then drop skinning at the same time at level 60 and grab mining, as 75% of mining can be skilled up by melting ores into bars anyway, giving you free skill ups. Skinning will provide you with a lot of extra raw gold while leveling, which is incredibly important in phase 1, where raw gold is a scarce resource, and especially with the faster leveling we have in Season of Mastery, you won't have as much gold as you hit level 40 or level 60, making it even more difficult to afford your mounds. If you plan on having mining and blacksmithing, then start with mining and skinning, then drop skinning for, uh, for blacksmithing. Once you hit level 60 or something, you get the point. Number 2. Only train important class abilities. This one goes hand in hand with the first advice, but instead of producing more gold while leveling, this advice is to be frugal with the gold you actually do have. So instead of literally wasting gold by training every ability available, be mindful of which abilities you train, and only train the ones you actually need. To put this really on the edge, as a hunter you barely have to train any abilities at all, so don't waste gold on training abilities you don't need or you don't use. If you're a frost mage, which I assume all mages will be while leveling, you can for example avoid training most fire and arcane damaging spells. Number 3, get out of the starting area as soon as possible. The sooner you can get ahead of the pack, the better off you are. The launch of Season of Mastery, although it will not be as hectic as Classic WoW was with the millions of people who played that, it will still be quite hectic, as we will have less servers and probably less layers this time around, and the starter zones will be a complete mess of players trying to finish their quests, so do whatever you can to get ahead of the pack. This involves getting out of the questing area or starting area, the second you get to level 5 instead of finishing all the quests, and then buying weapon upgrades if you're a melee character, or a bow if you're a hunter, and utilize your class's strengths to their maximum. As a hunter, utilize both your melee and ranged weapon timers to kill the most faster, and no matter what class you play, use your health as a resource and chain pull mobs as fast as possible. Basically, just be as efficient as possible. Number 4, I'm playing in with advice number 3, which is being as efficient as possible. I also recommend using death skips and logout skips whenever possible. For example, Rested XP uses death skips to save you almost an entire hour of running throughout leveling from level 1 to level 60, just from death skips. Up until level 11, you also don't get resurrection sickness from death skips, so go ham on death skips until you reach level 11. From level 11 it starts getting more and more punishing to do death skips, as you will get a resurrection sickness debuff, but even then it, will, it can still be used whenever you plan on taking breaks, or going to visit your class trainer to learn new abilities, or just in general if you know the follow up quest involves a lot of walking and slash or downtime. For you night elves out there, there is also a logout skip in the spider cave where you can log out after looting the egg and respawn back at the quest giver, and I believe there's a death skip for orcs and trolls that is essential to get ahead of the curve as well, and for the night elf logout skip it is important that over half your body is over the edge here, so keep that in mind. As a night elf you will also most likely want to get yourself to Ironforge at one point, and using the death skip by drowning yourself far west in wetlands at this exact location will make you respawn in Karanos and will save you a lot of time. Likewise, if you're playing a gnome or a dwarf, at some point you will want to get yourself to Darkshore for that juicy Darkshore quest experience, and there's a skip you can do up in the mountains of Dunmoro to jump off and respawn at the graveyard in wetlands, and this one will save you close to half an hour of running considering the mobs in wetlands and in the tunnel towards wetlands are high level and you will end up dying a lot, so this skip is probably the most important one for alliance players when it comes to skipping from Dunmoreau to wetlands. Number 5, have a group of people to level with. With a plus 40% increased experience from quests, it is actually a lot more viable to group level this time around, and it is probably going to be the fastest way to level up by being in a group of 2-3 to three people. 
you want to find a sweet spot where you can take advantage of being able to kill do key killing quests faster without having to wait too long for everyone to complete the specific gathering quests, so two to three people is probably where that sweet spot is. I would say this is especially important at the beginning to get ahead of the curve and finishing the starting zone quests as fast as possible, so consider finding a couple of people that aligns with your gaming schedule and form a group. Certain classes can even play on their class synergies, such as paladins and warriors that become unstoppable in a group, using blessings of might and battle shout to increase their attack power by a lot. As a general rule of thumb, when doing duo or trio questing, I recommend half the group starts killing mobs while the other half gathers items in the area if there's some gatherables, that way you will have a response up for the other people in the group to gather when you're done killing. Number 6, this one is tied to the previous advice and I just want to say that if you don't have a group of people to level up with, don't be scared to invite people in the open world to finish off killing quests. Use the slash say chat or send them a whisper letting them know why you want to invite them and just be polite and most people will probably join your group as it benefits them just as much as it benefits you and you will both be able to complete your quest faster. Number 7, as you enter the late 40s and especially 50s, you will have quests which grant the best pieces of equipment you can get prior to raiding, or even many raid instances into endgame. That being said, most of these rewards will be at the end of very long quest chains. This means that as you enter your late 40s and late 50s, you can start working on getting your pre bis items, while also getting experience at the same time. Number 8. If you care about gold making in Season of Mastery, make sure you check out my gold making guide for Season of Mastery through the link in the description. As of right now it contains 36 different items to invest in to make profit, and 38 different gold farms suitable for all classes. I will keep updating the guide throughout Season of Mastery, and by purchasing the guide right now, you will also get the updates for free. On top of that, if you use the code SOLHEIM at checkout, you can also save 50% on the purchase. And that's pretty much it guys, that's some tips and tricks for the launch of Classic WoW Season of Mastery that is more tailored to the gameplay itself instead of just the leveling experience and how to level up faster. I've also made a video on top 10 leveling advice for Season of Mastery for those of you who want some specific advice on how to level up faster in Season of Mastery, so make sure you check that one out as well. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable and informative, and if you did in fact enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up it really helps my channel out and I honestly really appreciate it. And while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Season of Mastery content. With that being said, I want to thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again very soon.